Hi guys, this is Tash. I hope you're all well. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Um, I'm coming to you today to show you a whip parade. My door is going to creak the whole time. I hope it doesn't. Yeah, I'm coming to you today to show you a whip parade. Um, I have 40 whips. I'm going to show you 10 at a time and then pause the video and pack them away and get the next ones out so I don't go utterly insane. Um, 40 is a lot but not as many as some people so you know judge if you want I don't care that's what I've got I enjoy them all so that's what I'm doing I'm sitting on my chair today so you get a nice background with the Japanese quilt that my mum made me and some nice previous finishes up there Takata too I love this one um yeah so without further ado let's get to it number one is And a Forest Grew by Rosewood Manor um I have a lot of working copies guys sorry um the originals are all somewhere this one for example is at my mom's house because she was also going to stitch it with me she hasn't she started but is not stitching it um but yeah you'll see a lot of working copies i'll try and put better pictures up here you know if needed so and a forest grew everyone's seen this one this is by rosewood manor um i started this in mania of 2017 um and the idea behind this was to stitch it um, two motifs a week, every week. Um, so I do that on the weekend. I stitch two motifs every weekend. I started it as a stitch along with my mum. We were both going to do that. And a few other people have actually said to me um, they're going to join in and do it with me. But I haven't seen any other people um, doing updates regularly, so I don't know if anyone is. But I have a lot done, actually. So that's what I have done, starting in this bottom corner. Look, I took it off the Q-snaps for you and I came all the way across and I'm up to this side and I'm just working up toward the top corner here. So yeah, that's quite a lot done. I think it's officially more than halfway. I really like this. It's so fun to stitch on. It's all just plain DMC and the motifs are just very pretty. I'm stitching one over two on 35 count so the coverage is doesn't look when you look up close, the coverage looks terrible, but I, I know that you all agree that it looks fine from far away. Um, the chart actually calls for 32 count, 1 over 2. Um, so, I think it looks gorgeous. I love this. Um, one of my favourite whips at the moment, and I do work on it every weekend. So that's number one. Okay. Number two, I'm going in alphabetical order, by the way. This is how I sort them on my my own spreadsheet where I have a spreadsheet where I have all my whips and I marked down what days I stitched on them and how long each day and stuff. Number two is Anne Barson Loughborough by Plum Street, Plum Street Antiques which of course is Plum Street Samplers um, and it looks like that and I didn't realize but actually this here is the original sampler. So um, Paulette gave us, gave us two palettes that we can choose between the model palette or sorry the model palette or the antique palette so this is the model um, and I actually have chosen colors based on this palette a lot more than this palette I got them all out and compared them but I like these colors better and I then I just I didn't have all the colors so I just subbed in some Victorian mottos and some DMC and whatever so I started this yesterday <laughs> um, during my week off and this is what I have done so far not very much in spite of all your towers. Um, and a little motif there and an almost invisible white border. You can't even see very well here but the entire piece has a white border around it. Um, like lace. Uh, it's not very easy to see but I think it will show up on this fabric especially when I come over to like this side where it's darker. It'll look very pretty. Um, I'll read it to you. It says, Hark from the tomb a doleful sound, my ear attend the cry. Ye living men, come view the ground where you must shortly lie. Princes, this clay must be your bed, in spite of all your towers. The tall, the wise, the reverend hand, head must lie as low as ours. So that's that one. Love it. Oh, and I'm stitching it on 46 count cinnamon roll from x Design. One of those fabric of the month. Fabrics of the month. Yeah, I love that one. I'm trying to, um, I've got all the whips out of the bags to avoid crinkle, so hopefully those who don't like it will be spared. Uh, whip number three is As Life Wears Away. I didn't get this out of the bag. <laughs> As Life Wears Away by Carriage House Samplings. 
May I govern my passions with absolute sway, grow wiser and stronger as life wears away. Um, and I love this, this part. Anyway, um, I'm stitching this on 60 count silk gauze. I started this this week. Um, I'm the crazy lady who's <laughs> stitching this on 60 count silk gauze. Um, that's what Elena called me. Um, I am crazy and I'm just flattered that Elena even knows who I am, so that's cool. Um, so here we go. I don't even know. The, I can't even bring it up, bring it close enough for you to see what, with it being in focus. So that's what I have done so far. Not very much. It was two or three hours work. Um, if you don't believe how tiny this is, there it is. It actually fits inside the finger holes of my scissors. Um, it's really tiny. <laughs> um, I cut this piece of gauze big enough to stitch it two over two. Sorry, one over two. So it would have been on sort of 30 count. But I tried it one over one and it worked. So I'm going with it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is whip number three. Number four. Oh, this one isn't actually cross stitch. This is cruel embroidery. Um, it's by Hazel Blomkamp. It's from the book Cruel Twists. And the one I'm doing is called Autumn Lace. And it looks like that. Um, yeah, I really like white work and cream work and white on white and cream on cream and tone on tone and this is just gorgeous. I mean, look at the details on that. So gorgeous. It's a lot of needle lace. Um, I started this at Beating Around the Bush. I took a class with Hazel on needle lace. That was in 2012. <laughs> um, so I, I haven't done very much. Um, but yeah, all this needle lace is going to be super duper fun. It is. I actually like lace. Sorry if that sounded sarcastic. And that is all I've completed so far. <laughs> Just that part there. You can see some lace, some very uneven lace. I mean, I'm not a pro at this lace. I'm still learning, but I think it looks beautiful anyway. Focus. No, it didn't really focus. Um, yeah, love it. Um, this comes all pre-printed for me, so at least I don't have to draw that on. But yeah, it's very pretty. Um, yeah, but this isn't something I pick up very often to work on. It's really involved. Oh, it's really difficult. It's really involved. Um, I use some really, you use some really weird threads like rayon and um, special dentels and stuff. And you just have to concentrate on it. And I don't like pulling it out for just a day or two. If I were going to pull it out, I'd want to work on it for a week to really get into it. Um, but then I also lose interest because it's so difficult. So it's not something I pull out often, but it is something that I would like to finish. So I'm keeping it as a whip because I love it. So that is number four, maybe, I think. And number five is uh, Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs. Uh, I haven't done very much. I started this on Halloween and everyone, all I've done is this little bit of the house. It's not very much at all. It started in the middle. Um, I'm using 40 count flea market brass from Teresa Kitten Stitch's Wabi Sabi collection and I love this fabric. It looks so cool. Um, I pulled some flosses. Some of them are the cold for, some of them are not. Um, oh god, they look so gorgeous, don't they? Um, and I think they will look great on this fabric. Like so good. So good. So yeah, I'm super excited about this. It was like a really last minute start. I was like, oh, should I, should I not? Yeah, all right, I'm going to. Um, I was sort of thinking about it all month and I was prevaricating on the flosses and I didn't know. Um, it's the first time I really tried to swap in my own Victorian Lotto threads and so on. Um, but I'm very happy with what I chose and I think it's going to look great. And I'm probably not even gonna work on it until next Halloween, but I'm happy to have it started. So, that was number five, I think. Number six, it's not, okay. Number six is these, um, the Bella collection, Bella Portraits. Bella Portraits by Nora Corbett. Um, and I've already done these two, and I still need to do these two. Um, I don't actually have a whip to show you because these two are done, and this these two aren't started. <laughs> Um, but I still consider it a whip because I'm sort of doing all four projects, all four pieces as one project. So I'll probably go, I don't know, I don't know which one I'll go next. But one of these two, they're both very pretty. 
Um, I'm stitching them on 32 count white, antique white, Lugana. Um, pretty simple because the whole background is filled in anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so yeah, not, nothing to actually show you on these, unfortunately. But that's number six. Number seven, oh, this is one of my favorites. This one is, I've been giving this thought recently, it is this huge monstrosity. Yes, that's correct. Um, it's called Biedermeyer Sampler and it's by uh, 12 Kleiner McClap McClappers. <laughs> 12 Kleiner McClapters, which means 12 little samplers. And they have a Facebook page and if you want to order this, you should look in the description box, box, description box below and click on the link to the Facebook page and go and find it and order it because it's really pretty. Um, there's actually a stitched piece here that might be clearer. Um, I love the colours, I love these little geometric motifs here, these crazy florals. Um, I've only barely started this. I started it in Mania this year. Um, I'm stitching it on 55 count Kingston linen. Um, one over two and that's all I've done just the very first motif up in the corner um, I didn't I'm not enjoying the linen honestly to be honest with you there you go that's the bit I've stitched I'm not enjoying the linen I find it really hard to actually get the DMC to sit nicely because the DMC is actually a little bit too thick for the linen so it's quite bulky um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see if I bring it in nope no, okay. Well, yeah, it's quite bulky. Um, coverage is fantastic, but it's quite bulky, so it's not the most fun thing to work on. Oh, God. What's going on with the colours? Okay, that's a bit better. <laughs> okay. Um, so I love this, and I want to go back to it. Um, I, I'll still stick with the 55, even though it's tiny. Um, it's still nice to stitch on, and it's going to look fantastic when it's done. This is white. It's not antique white, it's white. I wanted that so that the colours would would pop you know because it's so colorful I love this ah I actually want to stitch that soon but I've got so many things to do that's number seven maybe I think it's seven number eight it's one of my favorites <laughs> this is the Celtic sampler um, Wallace Wallace is part one and Robertson is part two so my fabric is actually big enough that I can stitch them side by side I did that on purpose um, and I will show you what I've done so far on Wallace ta-da doesn't it look gorgeous I love this so pretty um, that's a needle binder that's not a stitched piece but isn't this pretty the colors are beautiful it's all stitched in NPI silks I'm stitching it on 40 count cream linen um, I wish that I stitch it on something bigger than 40 count because when it comes to queen stitches in this section up here you just can't see the detail of them very well um, but you know I'm definitely not restarting it at this point there's a lot of queen stitches on this <laughs> this entire one is queen stitch this one this one this one and this one they're all entirely queen stitch um, so yeah I, I keep um, <laughs> I'm struggling to make progress because I'm getting sick of queen stitch but it's so pretty isn't it? Love it. It's going to be stunning when it's done. Um, I also have to come back in and all these white parts are all filled in with metallic braid. Um, so that'll be fun too. Oh, I've got a really sore back. <laughs> okay, that's number eight. Number nine. I like this one too. This is crazy. This is Contessa with Squid um, by Omar Rayan. The chart is from Heaven and Earth Designs. She's so cool. She's such a... She's so cool. Um, I haven't done much though. Not much to show. Uh, yes, that's right. This is page one here and I'm just... Or just this whole thing maybe. And I've just started on page two. So yeah, I haven't done very much. I'm stitching it on one over one full crosses on 32 count even weave. Um, the coverage is really good. I know you, actually you can see some white spots, but I can't see them in real life. The coverage is great. Um, I 
I love this. She's big though, she's 49 pages. Yeah, small format pages. <laughs> so she's big. I want to work on her more. I want to work on all my whips. This whip parade is going to be agonizing because I'm suddenly going to realize that I want to stitch everything at once. And I can't. So number 10 is, she is called, I don't know what she's called. I call her Dartha because on the chart it says Dartha. <laughs> so I think her name is Dartha. Um, and she is an angel bell pull. See there, that's what she will look like when she's finished. Um, I didn't stitch around the fabric it came with. I subbed it out for this oatmeal, Ada. 14 count oatmeal. And I really like it. And that's all I've done. <laughs> um, and I will cut it and stick some lace on the edge when I'm done. So it will look like a needle roll and no one will ever know. Um, and this is going to someone after I've finished. Sim, I think. It's Sim's unicorn. I think it's in one of your unicorns so I'm sending it on when I'm done and that's number 10 I'm going to pause this and clean up and get the next ones out and get a drink oh I forgot to tell you I didn't drink my tea I've been drinking from my Kit Carl and cross stitch mug that I got from Claire Pyrex Stitcher um, and in here is you can't see it's um caramelized apple green tea sent to me from candy stitches so thank you I will see you in a little while Hey, I'm back. Part two. Um, first thing, I don't know if I showed you guys this. It's not a whip. It's an FFO. Oh, it fell over. There's just a magnet on here that I'm sticking into. This is a needle slide. Isn't it pretty? This is Blue Bow Tweet. I finished this this week. Isn't he pretty? He's got a berry in his beak and he's the same on both sides. And I finished him myself and he took quite a while to finish to FFO, but it's very neat. Don't know if you can see how neat he is. Um, yeah, isn't he pretty? I love him. Uh, that's not a whip. I just thought I'd show you. Okay, whip number 11 is Elizabeth Creasy. I don't have a photo of what she'll look like when she's done. There's not a good one on the S Sampler website. This is charted by the S Sampler. It's a reproduction. This is all I have done so far. Look well to that thou takest in hand. Um, can't remember the rest of the verse. It's like, it's worth more than money or gold. When money is gone and land is spent, then learning is most excellent. I think that's what it says. Um, yeah, the reason I'm stuck on this because of this Montenegrin here. I do have that book, The Autopsy of the Montenegrin, but it's very, it's just difficult. It's difficult. Like, see the leaf. You have to change directions so many times in this leaf. Um, it's really hard. The whole carnation band is all Montenegrin. Um, I'll put in a picture here. I actually went to the Fitzwilliam Museum in July but on my honeymoon um, and I saw the original Elizabeth Creasy and it was amazing. <laughs> it was so cool to see something that I'm reproducing right now. Um, it was very cool. I'm gonna lower this because it's too bright bit better. Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, so yeah, I saw the original. I hope I've put it in a picture here so you can see it too. Um, this is 55 count cream linen. Um, and most of the sampler is stitched um, over three on 55 count, which is another hard thing to always remember to be counting over three instead of over two. Um, but this is, this is the kind of project that how? How? I just smashed myself in the face with the frame. Uh, even though it'll take me a lifetime, um, it will take me a lifetime, but it'll be so worth it when it's done. It'll be incredible. Imagine that, that girl, Elizabeth, actually stitching this for the first time. There's a massive white leg section at the bottom. And you know it's a big white leg section when you have this many <laughs> linen threads for the white work. That's a lot. Um, yeah, it's all stitched in a various look. Soir de Paris, Soir de Paris. Um, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. I love this, but it's so hard. <laughs> it's so difficult to work on. Um, but I should get back to it. I should tackle this Montenegrin again. And if I can't do the Montenegrin, I should just bite the bullet and pull it out and do cross stitches. I think that's reasonable. A little disappointing, but you know, it's better than not stitching it, right? I don't know. I don't know. 
Anyway, that is Elizabeth Creasy, number 11. Number 12 is Esther's Waves from Northern Expressions Needlework. Um, I started this about a month ago. It's an entry for the Canberra show, which starts next February, I think. So I have to have this done by then. Um, but I'm making good progress. This is what I've done so far. Let me put my whiteboard behind it. That's better. So the idea behind this for me is that the theme for the fair is wonderful water. That's why I chose this. I was going to do the waves all in different colours. So at the top we've got the sand, then the white is sort of where the waves break on the beach, and then it'll go from light blue down through to really, really dark blue at the bottom. So it'll look like, you know, the shallow water and then down to the depths. And so that is what I've been working on. I hope you can see some of the detail here. I love these Jessica hearts. I just, I just love this. Love those. Um, I've run out of the white, <laughs> run out of the white silk though, so I have to order some. Um, yeah, I've done three rows. I've started on the fourth there. It's a nice green colour. Tropical green. Um, it is, it is 36 count sand dune linen from Lakeside Linens. Um, yeah, and it will look like that when it's done. There are 11 bands, so I figure if I do one band a week, it'll be done by the end of January, pretty much. Or before maybe no about the end of January and that's probably what I need to do because the fair is in February <laughs> so I actually need to hustle on this and I've been feeling guilty this week that I've been making all these new starts when I probably could have done two bands on this but it's very nice I love it um, very detailed very crazy happy to have done it okay I'm just looking past the camera at my list excuse me okay next <laughs> it, number 13 I think my colors have gone all wonky again. No. Okay. Is Fair Philomel from Barbara Anna Designs. And that's her. It says Fair Philomel, she but lost her tongue and in a tedious sampler sewed her mind. <laughs> and I think it's super cute and funny. That's a sh quote from Shakespeare, by the way. I'd love to change it from sewed her mind to stitched her mind, but far be it from me to misquote the bard. Um, I started this literally about two hours ago, and that's all I've done. Um, so I've just done this part here on her arm, the side of her shirt and her arm. That's it. Not much to show. Um, the fabric is 46 count sampler khaki from X2 Design, one of my fabrics of the month. These fabrics have paid for themselves over and over again. They're so good. I'm using them for everything between these and the silk weaver ones I've been getting recently, I don't think I ever need any other fabrics. They're the best. Um, yeah, just started it today. <laughs> Not much to show. I really like it. I'll finish it probably, hopefully, hopefully early next year because I like it. Um, yeah, Barbara and Designs, so that's number 13. That was rude. That was rude. Whip number 14 is a problem child. This is probably one a lot of you have seen and heard of. She looks dramatic. Looks good, doesn't it? Um, I'll put a picture here. It's called Fire and Ice. It's from Custom Crafts. The original artist is Charlene Linz Cog Osorio, I think. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got the hiccups now. <sighs> um, and it looks very dramatic. Looks amazing here, actually. It's really not fun to stitch, though. It's, it's difficult, like, it's like a full coverage, but the black is still exposed, so I'm constantly worried about the red threads showing through the black fabric, because they will. Um, um, God, it looks really good though, doesn't it? It's not subject matter that I like anymore. I liked it very much when I started it, but I don't think I'm into horses that much now. <laughs> um, but I want to finish it, just because it was sort of, it was a big challenge for me when I started. I started this in about... 2003 or 4 as far as I can remember it was a challenge when I started and I love it I think it's 32 or 28 count black linen I don't know which um, the black is no problem for me luckily I have good eyes and good lighting so it's fine God, it looks so good on the camera I can't stop looking at it um, this is number 14 I think so 
this doesn't come out very often. I mean, really, if I just do sort of that much every time I pull it out, I'm happy. It'll get done eventually. Right? I'm only 35. I have many more years left to stitch, hopefully. <laughs> God willing. Um, so, after Fire and Ice is... Okay. Game and Nouveau. Or, or just the Gamer. I think she's just called Gamer. But I call her Gamer Nouveau. The artwork is by Medusa Dollmaker. Um, and on her um, Deviant Art page, it actually says Gamer Nouveau, which is why I call it Gamer Nouveau. Um, and she is Nouveau style, as you can see. But it's really cute. You can see like little Mario and mushrooms, Zelda, the piranha plants. That, that's meant to be Sonic. I, I just love it. I just love it. I just love everything about it. Oh my gosh. It's the best. Um, I've not done very much yet though. I have a long way to go. This is another 49 pages. At least these pages are smaller than Heaven and Earth design pages. Um, so yeah, there's a piranha plant. He looks awesome, doesn't he? There's a lot of needle minders on this one because they're all gaming related. That's a creeper. Hello. <laughs> uh, this one's a companion cube. <laughs> um, yeah, I love this. I must work on it more. I have two, this is my second full coverage design. The first one was Contessa with Squid. And I've been thinking maybe I need to focus on one and finish that first and then come to the other one. But I think it would be Contessa with Squid I would focus on, I don't know. I love this, it's super cool. Again, I'm just gonna chip away at it. It'll get done one day. One day. Uh, that's 15 maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Here lie my needles by Shakespeare's Peddler. I started this just this week, Wednesday or Thursday or something. I have not done much. The fabric is 46 count Golden Harvest from Silk Weaver. I love this fabric, it's gorgeous. And that's all I have done. Here lie my needles. Um, and a very detailed border. <laughs> but it looks really good, doesn't it? Um, I'm using mostly the called for colors. Actually, I'm using all of the called for colors. I believe um, because I bought them all like a crazy person because that was before I had Victorian motto <laughs> um, and I even have a piece of felt to put there so I'm going to finish it exactly like this because I have no creativity and why improve on perfection Teresa is perfection so yeah here lie my needles gosh this is like probably my favorite color in golden harvest I need to get more um, so I don't know what else to say about that. It's a really nice one. Uh, next is this. I count my non-stitching projects as whips because obviously it's a work in progress. Um, it's all craft. I just do. I don't have a lot of them. Don't panic. It's not going to be like a, new, a knitting podcast. Knitting videos. This is like my only woolen. This is my only one that isn't needlework. So this, you can see the entire width of what I've done there. Uh, not a lot, so, but I have many more rows to go. This is going to be a king size bed blanket. So it's super duper long. Um, if it's wide enough for a king size bed, I just have to do the length. It's really getting bright now. Yeah, the sun is coming straight in. I hope that helps. Um, so yeah, the colours are gorgeous. The pattern and the wool is from the Attic 24. There'll be a link below. The pattern is free. You buy the wools in a big bag. They're, they're just acrylic, like cheap, um, but really nice. So, this is super easy to crochet. It's like a, I don't know what these are called. I call it a shell pattern or a bubble pattern, but it's not a bubble. Bubbles are when there are bubbles on top. I don't know guys. I don't know um, anything about crochet, <laughs> but this is really nice and I love it. And it's going to go on my bed when it's done, but that'll be a while away. Um, I should fold it, but I'll do that later. Okay, that's 16, 17, 18, no, that's 17. So 18 is Riolis. Uh, I think she's called Lady with Fan. Um, but the original artwork is by Gustav Klimt. Um, it's just kitted by Riolis, charted and kitted and so on by Riolis. This is incredible look how beautiful it is look at the de the colors and the detail it's just gorgeous love this um i love quimped anyway but that's gorgeous 
um, horrible colour chart. I hate colour charts. Um, and I have done a pitiful amount. That's the top. <laughs> there you go, you can't even see it. Um, basically, I started on the one. So the threads in this are a wool acrylic, wool acrylic blend. It's not just cotton, so they're kind of fuzzy. They're really nice to work with. They have great coverage. But I'm worried that if I stitch a white thread next to a black thread, for example, um, I'll pick up some of the black fuzz, fuzzy fibres on the white thread and then my white thread will become discoloured. So I'm trying to do the light colours first. And that's what I've done here. This is just Kia basically. Um, the dark part in the middle is like her little armpit. That's her shoulder and her chest. That's what I've done there. So super duper exciting. It's really going to be fantastic when it's done. It's just big. It's big. That's a quarter of it. It's big. But it's beautiful. Okay. And I paid entirely too much for that chart a long time ago. And the fabric that came with the kit was tiny it gave me like an inch on each side for finishing and I, that wasn't wasn't good enough for me so I subbed in my own 14 count later if you sub in your own fabric for a Riolis kit with those threads don't go any smaller than 14 I was going to try 16 but it would have been too bulky with the threads the threads have great coverage um, number 18 is the lady in the unicorn this is um, I saw the actual tapestries in Sydney when they were here earlier this year um, this is Touch, The Sense of Touch. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love these tapestries. Um, and the fabric and chart were a gift from the wonderful Jerry. Thank you. It was very generous of her. She just contacted me out of the blue and said, hey, do you want this chart? And I was like, you know what? I really do. <laughs> I didn't even know I wanted it, but I do. Um, the colour is Russet. It's Hardanger, 22 count Russet. Um, and that's all I've done. Pitiful. I mean, look, it's just that little one in the corner. Pitiful. Um, I love this. This one has also been calling to me. Yeah, it's a bit more orange than what you're seeing. Yeah, it's very orangey. It's beautiful. Um, this one's been calling to me and I want to pick this up and do a lot more work on it. Like, today. <laughs> but I can't. I've got all these other deadline projects. Um, but yeah my unicorn needle minder for a unicorn project what could be more appropriate even if he is farting rainbows okay love that and number 20 i think i've missed the numbering up you guys but this is definitely number 20 whatever numbers i said in the middle if they were wrong i'm sorry um merchant mermaid by mirabilia everyone's seen this this is my favorite mermaid um I like this one and I, lo and I love golden girl apples because they look like product ads and I especially love that this is for Mill Hill beads and she is super blingy. Um, I don't have any of the beads yet. That'll be a financial outlay for sure when I, when I get the bead pack for this. But she's so pretty and I haven't done that much. The fabric is 32 count. Started off as cedar plank by Lakeside Linens but I over dyed it myself to make it a bit greener and the colour you're seeing there is really good. It's kind of greeny brown, yep. And that is all I have done. Um, you can see this horrible, <laughs> horrible ribbon blending filament here. There's a lot of blending filament in her. She'll be very, very sparkly when she's done. Um, yeah, this is beautiful. I love the fabric. The colours are going to be bright and lovely. The judgmental nun here. If you're in the, um, there's a group on Facebook called whatever the F you want cross stitch <laughs> and there's a joke in there about um, mermaids being called the whores of the sea so I put a judgmental nun a nun would be very unhappy at the whores of the sea so yeah <laughs> I love this the fabric I'm so happy with my dye job I mean it's a little bit browner it's really green it looks really green in real life. It's a little bit browner on the video. That's what I was trying to express. Okay, that is 20. We're halfway there, guys. I need to do two more sections. I also need to clear off my phone because it's full. The memory is full. So I'm going to clear my phone off, put these away, get the next 10 out. This is hard work. <laughs> See you soon. Hey there. Welcome back. I've been struggling with the camera a bit. 
Okay, we're good. We're good. Um, okay, let's go. So, number 21 is Mermaid's Folly by the Courtney Collection. Isn't that cool? Um, when I was at the V&A Museum in London earlier this year, I actually saw this panel in a book called The Book of Hours. Um, yeah, super cool, right? Really cool. Um, I'm stitching this on 40 count Cyprium from Picture This Plus. And I think it's awesome fabric. Look at that. And it's big. What? Yeah, it's big. <laughs> um, it is 40 count Cyprium. I'm stitching it in th DMC 3371 for the whole thing. Um, I thought of doing a fancy thread, but 3371 is cheap and readily available, so I chose that. And I started in the center because I like boobies. Clearly, that's why. Um, so I have a long way to go, as you can tell. Yes, a long way. I started this in Mania this year, I think. Yes, and my needle minder is super cool, and I think it <laughs> suits the piece very well. Um, I love this. I love it. I have two, only two mermaid pieces on at the moment. So, that is less than usual for me. Okay, 22 is Nantucket Rose by Lavender and Lace. The original chart is, I've lost some of my originals. <laughs> they were out in the living room in the old house and I haven't seen them since. I know it was this, I know it was Sir and Jady, or something else. Um, Anyway, that's all I've done. There'll be a picture. Um, so all I've done, I started in the center. And this is her puffed sleeve. And this is the road behind her and the sea. And I'm going to do a color conversion on her hair and give her red hair because she just reminds me of Anne of Green Gables. And someone else, Sarah the Stitching Mummy, also said the same thing. Um, she is like Anne of Green Gables, you know, she's wearing pink, she's got puffed sleeves, she's reading a book. Um, I'm going to convert the house to make it, you know, green roofed and sort of white looking. I think it's lovely. Lovely. Um, but yeah, I've thought many times about UFOing this because I'm, oh, I'm stitching it over one on 32 count evenly of some description. Um, it's just so much work. I guess I just keep plugging away at it and it will get done eventually. I'm just not motivated by it at this point in time. But that's okay. Look how little it is. So cute. Okay. That was 22. Number 23 is Now and Then by The Primitive Hair. Uh, this was a Nashville 2017 release, but I started it this October for Halloween. I'm going to stitch it just like this. Um, with the lady on both sides, but then when you pull the curtain back, the skeleton underneath, that's how I'm going to stitch it. I think that's really cool. Uh, there she is. I have not done much. This is just a part of her skirt and the skeleton's leg. So you can see it's just down here. Um, haven't done much. This is 46 count sampler khaki from X2 Design. As I said, these fabrics have paid for themselves over and over again. <laughs> um, I love my needle minder. <laughs> I think it's very appropriate. Um, yeah. Don't know what else to say about that. I just started this in October. I haven't done much. I'll probably work on it next October. I'm not very Halloween-y, but I really liked some of the Halloween-y sort of projects I've seen people pulling out. So I'm finding an opportunity to stitch them since everybody else is. Next. 24, I think. <laughs> Past and Present by Rosewood Manor. Um, this is amazing. It's really fun because you've got, you know, these Quaker motifs, you've got a bit of darning, pattern darning, some specialty stitches up here, um, some hardanger in the middle. Um, this calls for 28 count fabric. And normally I wouldn't make it smaller because I hate 28 count, but I decided to leave it at 28 count because I just wanted to make sure that this hardanger section didn't get, um, you know, messed up, didn't get, didn't lose detail by being stitched too small. So here's what I've done. This is 28 count. It's massive. It's huge. 
28 count is not my favorite. It's not my favorite. Um, but that's what I've done so far. I started in the bottom left corner, as you can see, and there we go. And like most Rosewood Manor charts, it's a matter of you pull out, you thread up a color, you do two stitches, and then you finish the color and pick out another color. So it's slow going, it's quite tedious, but the detail and colors are going to be gorgeous. Um, as I said, it's 28 count. I think it's cream fabric. It's pretty basic. Um, yep, yeah, it's going to be gorgeous when it's done. I started this as a stitch along for my 35th birthday, which was this year, with Lindsay. And she started at the top and she's done like everything down to there, I think. She's done so much. Um, I wish I'd started at the top too because then obviously I would have done as much, right? It's not because she's better than me. <laughs> she's definitely, she's definitely better than me. Um, yeah, it's really pretty though. I love it. I want to work on it more. I'll put it in the queue. Okay. 25, I think, is another massive one. This is the other one that I've lost the charts for. I've lost all my original Perry Schooler cardstock charts for the whole alphabet. I'm sure they're in a box in the garage. I just have to find them. I should have done that this week, unpacked that box. Unpacked all the boxes. Um, so this is the Perry Schooler alphabet. Everybody knows it. I'm currently stitching on the letter B and I have to finish this by December 18th for Year of Whips. So. Now that this week of starts is over, this will be my, my first priority. Um, B is for Blackbird, A is for Anchor. Um, this is 27 count something or other, don't know what, fabric. And it's really big, it's big enough for all the letters. Hello. Good girl. Um, yeah, so not much else to say about that. B is for Blackbird. Mm, yeah, that's all I have to say. So, I'm going to have to fold this up later because it's big. It's big, guys. Look. It's huge. Um, I'm calling that 25, I think. <laughs> Can you move, please? You're in the way now. She's not going to move. <laughs> Scotty, out. Thank you. Okay, 26 is RVDB1794 by the Assembler. I got this as a kit a couple of months ago. Um, it's gorgeous. It all, it's all stitched in a Verisois silks and it came with linen that I now think might be mallow. 40 count mallow because I just pulled out the mallow I have and it looks very similar. And that's all I've done. I started this this week. I've just done one little motif. I'm enjoying the darning. It's a lot of fun. It's very simple. I mean, really, you just go straight down and just bring the needle up, bring the needle down at the right points, and then go and then turn around and go up and do the same thing. Just up and down, up and down. Um, oh, it looks good, doesn't it? That sh silk is so shiny. I love it. Um, it's a beautiful project. I think it won't take too long because that motif took me about two hours, so that's not a lot of hours on this piece. It's a nice one. I want to work on that more next year. Okay, 27 is the one that everyone has stitched and I'm way behind. Sally Spencer. S Sally Spencer Sampler by Birds of a Feather. And I love this. It's very pretty. I just love the, the, um, the verse on it. Sooner begun, sooner done. I mean, she's right. She's absolutely right. Sooner begun, sooner done. This is now my motto in life. The sooner I start all of these projects, the sooner they'll all be done, right? Um, I love this. It's so cool. And everyone has already stitched it and I'm way behind. I've only just started. Um, this is 40 Count Ale from Picture This Plus. I'm stitching it in the cold fall colours. I took this to Europe with me and I didn't work on it much. I worked on it at the Warhammer World. Um, the pub there. It's all themed pub. It was really funny. Um, oh, and this needle minder gave me trouble at security because they thought I had scissors in my bag. 
And I said, no, I swear I have taken all my scissors out and I'd forgotten that I had a scissor shaped needle minder. They let me keep it, but um, yeah. <laughs> Luckily it only came up at one security, not at all of the other security I went through. Um, so there we go, that's my little start on that. I'd like to work more on that next year too. That's the problem with a whip parade. You see all your whips again and all you want to do is stitch on all of them. <laughs> 28 is the sampler name tag by Sharon Cohen, um, the Nostalgic Needle. Um, yeah, I'm stitching this because I want to actually wear it as a name tag at all the retreats I'm going to next year. Um, so I did start it, I just started it this week. There we go, that's my name, Tash Kiermaier. Um, I've already made a mistake. This dark green vine here is supposed to be the light green colour that I did underneath. So I need to unpick that. But I didn't want to do it the other day, so I didn't. Um, the fabric is a coffee dyed by me, 32 count linen, just a scrap. And it's only just big enough, but it will do. Um, the colour palette is so like 1995, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's so But I love the colours. I don't mind at all. Love it. It's so pretty and you've got some specialty stitches. Of course it's meant to be a name tag and you know if I wear it as a name tag it's big. It'll cover my, you can't see, it'll cover my whole boob. That's an achievement. Um yeah I like this and it'll be a quick stitch and I should be able to finish it certainly before the first retreat I go on next year which is the Mirabilia retreat in February. <laughs> um, number 20 nine is my big baby i'm not taking this off the scroll frame for you i'm sorry i don't love you that much um this is sarah brazier so i hope you can see that whole thing i can't see what you can see i think you can see it all um it's big this is about the halfway point here just here um i didn't get the chart but you've all seen it i'll put in a picture here stop it um, so yeah, I'm just down to the halfway point on the side. I'm just up to the bower in the middle where the deer is, so I can start stitching under under this yellow part here. This is where the deer is. There's some words first, and then the deer. So, Scardi, out. Yeah, that's Sarah Brazier. Um, this is by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. It came out in May this year, and I started it then. Um, it's a limited edition chart. Um, the reason I'm desperate to stitch it and finish it by May next year is because if you finish it by May next year, you can go into the running to win an actual antique sampler um, from Nicola. That's the prize she's giving out. So I'm on board. I want that. So this fabric is 46 count um, custom dye from X2 Design. She called it Sarah Brazier Blend. And um, the reason I did 46 count is only because it'll fit on a fat half if you get 46 count, but it won't if you get 40 count. So, lesson learned. There we go. That's Sarah Brazier. I'm really sorry you can't see more of it, but I'm not unfolding it. It's too much work. It's, it's hard work doing a whip parade, I'm telling you. It's um, a long day. <laughs> it's a lot of fiddling around with whips. Okay, number 30 is the, Nan the Sewing Chest of Nantucket Sister Sailor Sarah Elliott by Primitive Traditions. And I, when I saw, there's a floss tuber called Sarah Elliott, her channel is Stitchology, and when I first saw her come on, all I could think of was this chart. Um, so this chart is no longer in print. Um, you can get just the box top um, from Primitive, Tra Primitive Traditions, that is still in print, but not all these little smalls. I love this little need. I think it says needle book or a scissor case. This is crook jaw, crook jaw the whale. I love it. Um, I have the box and the scrimshaw accessories. Um, and I was going to stitch this for my mum. I bought the whole kit to stitch it up for her for her 50th birthday, which was in 2010. So here we are, it's 2018, and I still haven't stitched it. Um, she's turning 60 in 2020, so my goal now <laughs> is to have it done by then. Um, Mm, yeah, so I'm stitching it exactly as called for because when I started this in 2010 I had no idea that you could swap out threads and I didn't have any special threads to swap it out with. I don't think I did. 
Um, so I'm using 36 count morning dove linen. That's M-O-U-R, morning. Um, it's from Lakeside Linens, it's the cord for linen. Um, and I'm all the cord for threads as discussed. And this is all I've done. And this is just the box top, as you can see. So I, I started this a long time ago and I did a lot of work on the crook jaw, but the dye lot on the threads was all wrong. So um, it looked really gray and the whale blended into the background and you couldn't tell what it was at all. So I, I st actually still haven't unpicked that yet, but I need to. I'm going to stitch all of the little smalls and box liners and stuff. So there's still a lot of work to do on this and I need to do it next year so I can give it to my mum in March of 2020. And I need to do some FFOing. So there, there we go, there's number 30. Um, there's only 10 more, so I'll be back in a little while for the last part of the whip parade. Okay guys, we're nearly there. We're on the home stretch. This is the last 10 of my whips. Um, so let's do it. Um, number 31 is Thank You Sarah Tobias and I'm doing this piece here. Um, I started it just this week. There's a better picture of it. I'm doing it because I saw Teresa, kitten stitcher, uh, had stitched it and she put her name in at the top instead of Sarah Tobias. I'm going to do that too because I want to do everything she does because <laughs> she's wonderful. Um, so I started this this week and that is all I have done. Not very much as you can see. Um, just two little motifs. Um, I'm stitching this in DMC on just a 35 count antique white linen I had in my stash. Um, I'm doing it in DMC not in the core four weeks dye works because I'm going to over dye this with tea and coffee after it's stitched and that is a method they outline how to do in the book so that's what I'll be doing. Um, so that is Sarah Tobias. Uh, 32 is the Singer Sampler series from Silver Creek Samplers. So you know the song from The Sound of Music, Doe, a deer, a female deer, Ray, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Um, so I think they're super cute, I love them. I am stitching this with all the cord for threads on a 40 count soft ivory. Um, just any kind of 40 count would do. Um, and that's what I have so far. Just the first part, Del and Ray. Sorry, got a bit blown out just then. So cute. I love it. Um, I might finish it next year. I probably won't. We'll see. <laughs> just being realistic. Um, okay, number 33 is this one. I love this one. This is Siren Jady. Let me roll it up a bit and put something behind it so hopefully you can see it a bit more clearly. There we go. That is a bit better. This is Siren Jady by The Sampler Cove. Um, isn't that gorgeous? I love the colours in this. It is stitched all in silks. Um, some in Verisoir, some needlepoint ink some something else uh, and it's all tie motifs and the reason I'm doing this is because Tim and I went on a um, cruise to Southeast Asia including Thailand in 2016 and I sort of started this to remind myself of how wonderful it was and this is just stunning it's gorgeous I've been wanting to stitch on this but this is one of the ones where I'm missing the original chart and I've been feeling bad about it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to get into those boxes or just buy a new chart because I want to work on it. I do have a working copy, um, but I don't think I have all the pages. So, okay. I really love that one. It's, it's just so stunning. Everything on black looks good, doesn't it? Okay, that was 33. 34 is... The Strawberry Sampler by Darlene Osteen of The Needles Praise. Um, this is a reversible sampler. It's all done in running, double running stitch. Um, and I think there's some reversible cross at the bottom there. Um, but it's really traditional 
strawberry thief motifs and it's really cool very cool and here nope that's upside nope that's the back see that's the back and you can't even tell because the back is identical to the front that's the front that's the back look how neat it is guys i'm so proud of myself that's the front <laughs> Um, so obviously I have a long way to go on this. I would like to work on, I doubt I'll finish this next year, but I really want to work on it. Um, when I just stitched on my beloved's gift this week and then put it away and decided I'm not actually going to stitch on it after all, I kept thinking back to this and I, this is so much more enjoyable, so much more enjoyable for me to stitch. So I'm going to be focusing on this every time I think about my beloved's gift. If I start to feel bad about that, I'm just going to work on this. <laughs> This is so cool. Isn't that cool? Really nice colours. It's a 36 count cream linen and the threads are all Averisois silks. I like using silks. Who doesn't? Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, 30 whatever. <laughs> this is one that I started this week. This is called The Tale of This and That, this and that Sampler by Cynthia Daly Bradford of Little by Little Designs. Um, I'm not going to read it again, but basically the two birds are having a fight because one of them got up early and stole the worm. So, <laughs> um, and here is what I achieved in a day of work. Not very much, but I'm, I'm actually happy. Um, this is 46 count antique khaki from Silk Weaver. Yes, antique khaki. And this is really hard to show you the colour. The colour you're seeing is pretty good, but it's a bit more bronzy green. Um, yep, and that's what I have done so far. And basically, right here is the very middle of the sampler, because you can see there. I've just finished those leaves, and then the crown will go in the middle. So it's not big. It's very small. It's going to be lovely when it's done. I'm very happy with it. Um, it was fun to work on. It was good. Next is Trade Winds by Teresa Wensler. Um, this is gorgeous. I love it. I was going to stitch this for my dad. He likes ships. He was in the, in the Navy for years, so obviously he likes ships. Um, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. I mean, the detail in it is gorgeous. That's what you expect from Teresa Wensler, right? Um, I started this ages ago. And I stitched on this linen that came with it. You can actually see my start here. <laughs> and I made a mistake in the water here. So I unpicked it. No, I didn't unpick it. I just, I decided I'm not going to stitch on this linen and I went and bought myself. Um, picture this plus. This is 28 count Lugana in Ancient from Picture This Plus. And I restarted. And that's all I've done. <laughs> so you can see that curved line is just... The, the, the border of the ship here. That's all I've done. <laughs> Pretty pitiful, but um, yeah. The fabric's gorgeous. I love this fabric. I think it will work really well for this piece. I want to work on this more. It's just so hard. <laughs> Teresa Wensler's, they just take concentration. I hate more than anything in cross stitching, I hate blended threads. It just takes forever to. It just takes concentration and planning and too much work to be pulling out two colours of thread and threading the needle every time. So that's, you know, I will finish it one day. I'll work on it bit by bit and it will get done. Um, but not anytime soon, that's for sure. <laughs> I do like it though. Okay, next is... Ta-da! Isn't that beautiful? That is so cool. Isn't that cool? It's beautiful, right? I love this. It's so bright though. Ugh. Just cool it, camera. That's a bit better. There we go. Um, this is called the Tranquility Sampler from Stickadeen von der Wienberg. I don't have a photo of what it will look like finished, but if I can find one online, I'll put it here. Um, it was a mystery sampler when I first started it. So um, one part was released every week or every month. I think there were 20 parts so it must have been a weekly part and I started it then um, and obviously didn't finish it then because that was in 2007 so 11 years later <laughs> I'm more than halfway done this this sorry this section here is the center so I am more than halfway done 
Um, I just chose colours myself. I just went and chose a rainbow palette of Gentle Arts and Weeks Dye Works threads and just stitching it out of those colours. They're really nice. Um, what else? That's it. Um, oh, it's stitched one over one on 32 count opalescent Lugana from Silk Weaver. The colour is called Cashmere Glitz and it doesn't, it's like a taupey colour. Um, yeah, it looks gorgeous. I would like to finish this because it's been going since 2007 or 2006 maybe. Um, I, for a while this year I was going, I was working on one motif per week and I was stitching it on the weekend but it just took up my entire weekend. Um, so I had to stop because I needed to stitch other things but I should definitely put some more work into that because it's gorgeous and it deserves to be finished after 12 or 11 years of working on it. Um, there's, even the back is cool, right? <laughs> what a mess. What a mess. Okay. 30 something. Tulip Festival by Brenda Gervais. Yes, Brenda Gervais. Tulip Festival. The reason I got this chart is because I saw it at the Mirabilia retreat last year actually and I looked at it and I went oh my gosh is that a pterodactyl? I saw this head, this is actually a bunny but I thought it was a pterodactyl I thought that was its eye there and that was its mouth looking up at the sky and I was like that is so cool that's hilarious someone actually designed like an old-fashioned primitive style pterodactyl that's hilarious um, but it isn't it's a bunny but I bought it anyway and I decided I would convert it to a pterodactyl. So this is going to be Tulip Festival pterodactyl style. And I haven't done much on this, don't get excited. I haven't done the, the pterodactyl yet. I've done one tulip. That's it. <laughs> um, yep. This is 46 count Golden Harvest from Silk Weaver, which as I said before is like my favourite colour. It's just so good. It's so good with everything. Um, I'm using the most of the called fall colours. She keeps calling for overdyes, like Weeks Dye Works, for just for just the black in the in the bees. Each bee has two stitches of black in it. So she's like, oh, use I don't know what it'll, carriage black or something, and the white in the bees' wings. Go use chalk. Why not? Spend four dollars on that skein of chalk for twenty stitches on this entire thing. Yeah, no. So I'm using most of the called for threads, but not all. Um, and as I said, I did, yes, 46 count Golden Harvest. Look how good that tulip looks. It's beautiful. That colour is um, mulberry, I think. Really nice. Okay. This one is 39. Guys, we're almost there. Villa Mirabilia. We know it. We love it. I love it. It's incredibly, ridiculously huge. It doesn't even fit on a fat quarter. She's so big, she needs a fat half. Um, so I'm using the called for fabric, which is 32 count willow uh, linen from Zweigart. And this is what I have done so far. Not a lot, but that's her hand. Um, so if you look back at the chart, sorry. You can see where I started in the middle. Um, there's her hand there on her dress and so I've just worked on this part here and her bodice this is her bodice so yeah not much there's a lot more to go <laughs> um, she's big I started her on January 1st this year as one of my year of whip starts no as my new year new start that's what it was and yeah she's incredible it's crazy she's so big there's just going to be so much stitching on her um, but she's gonna be amazing when she's done so yeah, that is Villa Mirabilia. Now I've got to fold her back up again. And the last one, the very last one, is one I started this morning. <laughs> um, and it is Yuletide Shanty by Plum Street Samplers. Um, super cute, right? There's Santa in a ship. How cute is that? And then on the bottom it says... Old Saint Nick, he sails the seas, his beard grows long so he won't freeze. <laughs> I just think it's so adorable. And it, you make it into a little drum, and this is the side of the drum. Just so cute. 
Um, so I'm using sort of a natural linen because I'm cheap and this is what I had in my stash. It calls for weathered shingle or something, but I don't have that kind of thing. Um, and I'm stitching it all in DMCs oh, and a couple of Victorian Motto threads. I've found that I don't have a lot of dark colours in Victorian Mottos and they like colours. I'll talk about that another time. Anyway, um, yeah, so I've just done, just at the bottom here, just down here, just the sand and the tree. So there we go. Isn't that cute? So yeah, that's my little start on that. I'm stitching this as a stitch along with Amy Loves Toads. We're going to stitch this for Christmas because it's nearly Christmas. I don't get very Christmassy, um, but this is just too cute to pass up. Look at the wreaths on the on the next to the portholes on the ship. I mean, it's so cute. Okay, you'll touch Angie. That is number forty. That's it. That's all my webs. I'm done. This has been a long afternoon. Now I have to edit this thing, put in pictures, <sighs> write the description below. Check the description below. I'll put in links where I can. I'm done, guys. This video might not go up for a couple of days because the editing is going to be a lot of work. Um, I'll catch you later. Bye.